Hello again, and welcome to Faith, Family, and Politics. I'm your host, Joshua Cummins. We're going to have a really big show today. Yeah, we are. I was a little bit delayed there. <laughs> That's our good friend, Louis Rodriguez, host of Rodriguez Rants. Thanks for joining us, Lou. Thank you for having me. I was on pause for a while. I was pausing for a while. Fair enough. <laughs> I thought maybe it was that delay so we can like censor what we're saying. <laughs> what it was. Oh, well, yeah. We might need a little bit of that with. with I had to show my good looks. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who are, who are not watching us on video and you're just listening on audio, you're missing out. Louis is a handsome, handsome Puerto Rican. Don't believe me. <laughs> I'm ugly as hell. <laughs> Well, across from him is another handsome fellow. He's, he's everybody's favorite, the host of The Laughing Libertarian, Alan McFarland. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us, Alan. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. <laughs> he's, he's, he's here. He's tired, but he's here. So I'm, I'm going to make it. It's going to be yeah. funny. It's going to happen. All right. <laughs> and then uh, another handsome guy at the table. You know, uh, everybody loves this guy. Beer he's the host on of the More on More. Oh, well, yes. Uh, my father, Gary Moore. Hey, hey. Good to be on here once again. Thank so. you for coming back, Pop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. He keeps inviting me back. I keep wondering why. <laughs> I, I, I thought every time I kind of, if I butch it bad enough, he'll stop calling. And then Louis <laughs> is like, man, you got to bring him back. He's awesome. <laughs> His knowledge of the word is incredible. It, it's, it's the only way I can get mom to watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's uh, hey, that guarantees a viewer every time yeah, you see you me. Get at least one view. Get at least one view. <laughs> Which last week's show did pretty well. Yeah, last week's show did pretty darn well. I, I was I was really surprised. Right. And uh, speaking of doing really well last week, um, and we know that you're already subscribed. We know that you're already following. But make sure that you're sharing, you're liking, all that good stuff. Sharing is caring, by the way, folks. And uh, there's this other thing we do. What is it, Alan? Uh, we make sure to comment, 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 comment. Yeah. And we read those. <laughs> yeah, we do. And and we respond. Sometimes maliciously. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> if you're malicious to us, we'll be malicious back. Uh, eye for an eye, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> tooth that, for a tooth. That's what it says. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. It says. I mean, yeah, one in the hospital, two of theirs in the morgue. Yeah. No, wait, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh. You got a title for us tonight, Paul? Yes. Welcome your brother. We're going to look at the book of Philemon and a gentleman by name of Oni- Onemus. Onemius. So I thought it was. See, I thought it was Philemon. I, I want to make sure that I was like Philemon, <laughs> and then I heard the the course Pokemon theme song. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. Well, you know, I know you're a gamer of that sort, so that was going to <laughs> that was going to fall in. Whether I'm pronouncing it correctly, I'm sure someone in the comments. I've will I've heard it both ways, so, so. Uh, enunciation, but I it's just kind of interesting to me whenever I hear a word that I'm not used to. So yes. tell us who's right. <laughs> yeah, comment. Exactly. Make sure you put the the fanatics in there with the word so that we know. Yes, most definitely. Even the ux, ux, yes, the ux. <laughs> and the ach. <laughs> and uh, the the correct uh, Hebrew pronunciation, along with the Aramic pronunciation and the Roman or Greek pronunciation, uh, maybe even Latin, if you want to. Yeah, if, you're, exactly. if you're really uh, exactly, if you're really getting into the game with us, we know when you've reached that level, you are dedicated to the comment, and we greatly appreciate that. And the algorithms will see that notification and just. And pat ooze, you on the head. Ooze on it, yes. <laughs> and we'll send you a thumbs up comment. Yes. <laughs> for it. Uh, Sooner or later, you'll have to start passing out the diamonds for those uh, those uh, super fans. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, depending upon the, the platform, yeah. They will they can give us stars. And um, they can they can earn diamonds uh, through through uh, Facebook in particular. If they're the top fan, they can get their their, their little sticker. Top fan. Showing diamond. that they're the top fan, yeah. It shows that they're the diamond fan. Currently, it's our, our booker, Yvonne. She's number one top fan. I don't know if she knows that or not, but she's she's the number one commenter on our on our stuff currently. So if you're trying to beat Yvonne, you better get on it. Man, so in other words, I just need to go back to number one and go, awesome. Go to number two, cool, and just kind of go through the alphabet. <laughs> it really so, doesn't count if we do it. Yeah, sorry. My, <laughs> does. my brain was like, you said you better you better get on it. I was like, you better give on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she's a good role model, that's for sure. Exactly. All right. Uh, well, we're going to have a word of prayer, and then we'll get into this. 
into the word here a bit and we'll discuss our brother. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you praise, Lord, and honor first for our salvation. Lord, we thank you for this night that we can come together as brothers, Lord, to sit around the table to discuss your word along with uh, the our family portion and our political portion. Lord, we just let us enlighten those that are listening or watching this tonight, Lord, uh, when they see it. I just ask that it is enriching and those that hear it or see it will comment accordingly and uh, just be uplifted by your word and the words of the men that are around this table. We ask all of this in Jesus' blessed and heavenly name. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm not playing on my phone, but I am going to use the Bible app and uh, go from there. I'm not mad at you. Sometimes that can be a little bit easier. Beautiful thing is about Philemon, it is literally one chapter long. So we're talking about oh, 25 verses, but we're going to we're gonna try to go through it somewhat quickly to get down to the verses. But uh, we've got Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and our beloved Aphia, um, Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God making mention of these thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. We'll just stop there for those first six. When you are greeting someone that you care greatly about and you find a, a, an, um, a masculine affection for someone, someone, a brother that, that just, that's someone you'll go to battle with, um, that is your battle brother. Um, when you've got someone like that, it is, it is not a uh, feminist uh, uh, feminine to to kind of talk in this fashion because you're letting him know it's like your service to the Lord, our service to the Lord, the things that we do together to further the kingdom of God. When you acknowledge stuff like this, you're you're adding kadoos to them, but in the same time, you're giving them the praises that God has for them, and these affirmations need to take place. Um, that's one of the things that we try to train up a child in the way that he'll go. And there are affirmations that must take place, whether it is a boy or a girl, to affirm them, to grow them. Now, that doesn't mean that you block them from every bad thing because it is critical sometimes for bad things to take place in order for them to grow. Yeah. All right. So so this this salutation that we've seen here, um, it, it is it isn't meant to kind of bloat his head up. It is to acknowledge that God is well pleased with his work and those that are working in the church that is in his home. I mean, think about this. This isn't the church building down around the corner. This is in his house. He has made his home available for anyone to come in to hear the word of God and to glorify God, to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and learn of him. So, so we see that this is taking place, and that can be a great challenge. And a lot of we've got a lot of brothers and sisters around the world that are being persecuted for doing this type of a thing. Um, there was a lady that was throwing a party. Uh, her mother was throwing her a party, and I know this is kind of off topic, but it, it's a valid point that needs to be made. Um, she got her commission, so she was going to she was um, entering in to be a nun and she had gotten her position, her post. So they was throwing a, a going away party for her. And um, so they've got family and friends over that are, you know, going, hey, congratulations on your, on your new position, and we'll miss you. We love you. We know that the Lord's going to take good care of you. And people come in and say, you're having a church service, and everyone gets arrested. And that's the type of stuff that's going on around the world. And we're yeah. starting to see some of some small scale, but big scale 
uh, situations taking place here in the United States. Uh, three crosses were burnt on a church property um, out in California. Another church had been broken into twice. Their safe was stolen on two different occasions. In that safe was the money they used to feed the homeless and the hungry. So, I mean, money that wasn't even for the church, it was money that they was given to the poor, the needy, those that needed. Yeah, the widow and the orphan. The widow and the orphan. Um, so this is the type of salutations that we're seeing here. It's like for your service, for your hard work, God sees it, God knows it, God glorifies you for it. So that's this type of a salutation. So kind of keep that stuff in mind as you're in your walk. When you think you're at, when you're having a low time, there's someone else that's having it an even worse time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll, I'll bring up another one. Um, all in the notion of welcoming your brother. There were two women during the um, Nazi Germany uh, war. They were put into um, barracks 13, and um, they were sitting there praying, and her sister, she's like, well, you know, thank you, Lord, for the food and um, everything that goes on. And her sister says, well, you know, thank God for the fleas. Hmm. And they're like, why should I thank God for the fleas? Well, there's always a purpose for the fleas. And here's two women that were in barracks, and it would not be uncommon for a German shoulder soldier to have raped or beaten a woman. But during their time here, the only thing that was affecting them physically were fleas. The soldiers didn't want to get bit by the fleas. So sometimes even having fleas is a blessing from God. So, so. all right, so now that we've, we've ran down a little bit of a rabbit hole, and Sterling's probably going, oh, good golly, thank goodness he's left that one. <laughs> is the reason the soldiers didn't want to get bitten because the fleas were infected? No, the fleas were just in there, so they it's didn't want to a, go. Yeah, just an annoyance. They're, they're more of an annoyance than anything. Oh, okay. But So they were an annoyance to the girls, but in the end, those fleas were keeping them safe from mm. the soldiers. So from being beaten or raped by the soldiers, they were getting bit by fleas. Mm. So um, uh, a different version of Daniel in the lion's den, so to speak. Yeah, the, the fleas were nipping and biting a little bit, but... Um, the the worst thing, the bigger lines weren't being affected there. Uh, right. So, all right, let's jump back in. Uh, For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoy and join thee, that which is convenient, yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee being such as one as Paul to the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Now, he's going to make reference to being a prisoner of Christ. Now, this isn't that there is there's um, something specifically that you are you're condemned to be um, a Christian. That is not the case. Um, this is just kind of part of his situation he is He's given himself to god yeah well it's not only that but in paul's situation he was in rome and he was imprisoned for his faith oh, okay and so it, it's kind of he's kind of referencing that but it's identifying that I, i'm sold out god is in control christ is the master um he's he's everything over my life so in, in my present situation he is my prison master mm. Um, but that's not in the essence of that it, it is um, it is a punishable state to be with Christ. Um, so he's the reason why they say when in Rome, do what the Romans do. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, in some ways, yes. I beseech <laughs> thee for my son. So now he's finally here in verse 10. Um, he gets in because there is someone that he needs to, um, that he is going to tell about what this young man has done for him and knowing that Philemon knows who this young man is. And I beseech thee for my son, Oniamus, Onesimus, yes, uh, whom I... We can just call him Simon for short. (laughs) 
Uh, ones. Miss. Yeah. Ones, miss. <laughs> yeah. I went to public school and the names were easier than these. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> um, hey, hey, Ron. There is a whole nother story on that one, but we won't, we won't go down that rabbit <laughs> hole. Uh, whom I've, I have begotten in my bonds. So he has been, he has been with Paul in Rome. And here in just a little bit, I'm getting ready to kind of open your eyes on what this conversation is all about right here, uh, which in time past was to the unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me, whom I have sent again, thou therefore receive him that is mine own bowels. Okay, now what we've got here is a young man that has been spending time with Paul and has been ministering. He has been outside of the prison walls, but he's been anything that Paul needs, he's trying to secure. If Paul's needing food, an extra blanket, an extra coat, he's trying to make sure that Paul's taken care of. Anything that Paul needs written down, any message that he needs to get to the outside to get into anyone, this is what this young man is doing. Now, this young man... Um, you've already seen here where it says kind of like a personal assistant. Agree. Uh, Timothy was a, a very special individual. Was also listed as a son. Um, I think that there was only like three or four people that Paul identified as a son. He was not actually Paul's son, but he was a son to um, to Paul in the faith, and that that Paul had had such a good relationship with him that he had taken him under his wings. He saw something special in him and that there was growth and the ability to, to prosper and to further the church. And when you've got someone like that, that's a good thing. You, you want people around you that's going to grow you and that you can grow. It's like having a good bag of miracle grow. If, um, man, that's a whole loaded bag. <laughs> All right, Rewind. We can knock that one out. So surround yourself with manure. Gotcha. No. <laughs> <laughs> you knew well, I was going there. We are broken people, and we have been beat down, trodden, and depressed, and oppressed, and so on and so forth. There are times that we feel like unprofitable people, and we have been unprofitable people in our actions. If you have stolen any time from your boss, you have been unprofitable to your boss. Whether it's you take an extra five minutes on a fifteen minute break, Man, extra you five. had to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> I I know the slave driver over here keeps those minutes sharp on you, <laughs> but uh, you know you are a thief at that point. And if you look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've committed adultery. So we kind of look to see that we've we're a fallen people. There's no one perfect, not one. But the beautiful thing is, is that there was one that was perfect, and he was the perfect lamb, and that was Jesus Christ, who these guys are serving and these guys that are, are working towards being profitable for. So um, he is the reason he is bringing up um, Onesima um, to Philemon is— Bless you. Bless you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm waiting for a chew to show up. <laughs> um <laughs> Tight tights, and yeah. someone's going to get that. Yeah, if you know the movie <laughs> reference, comment. Tight tights. <laughs> <laughs> and um, good golly, real, real Becky and Gary. Um, yeah, right over here. <laughs> Dude, my took problem him, took him right off the tracks. <laughs> my whole job. Right off the tracks. That's my whole job here. Yeah, Just derail on the train. Derail, and I, I told myself, I said, "All right, look at Dallin right off the bat and say you derail me. I'm kicking you." <laughs> 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 I just kicked his chair for take, those that are listening. I the water out of my mouth. <laughs> he, went, he was still humorous on that one. He was like, yeah, that wasn't even a kick. No, my humorous uh, was around the... Was yeah. My legs were fine. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, when he took Bo off the tracks, Bo just goes toot toot, and then he went right back into it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, I've got good notes, but not great notes. Um, oh, thank, knowing, goodness. Good, thank goodness you said notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're notes they're not good notes um he had committed an a, a felony against his boss now onimus onimus 
and Philemon. Philemon was the owner of Onimus. Onimus. Um, <laughs> man, oh man. By the time the night's over, I'm going to have it down. Phil, and, have, Phil and Nemus. Phil and Nemus. Phil yeah. and Nemus. Phil yeah. and Nemus yeah. Um, yeah. need to get back together, and Paul is going to orchestrate that, and that's what he's doing, which someone is going to comment. This is, oh, so when you kind of went on about those first six, seven verses about him kind of laying it on real thick about his service with the Lord, this was to let him know, hey, that slave that stole from you supposedly – I'm sending him back, and I really need you to act like you love him. <laughs> so, you know, someone's going to do that, and I'm sure someone's going to put that in the comments. Um, all right. Maybe not. I don't know. But now he can be profitable for thee. And the beautiful thing is is what he's going to go on, and he's going to ask him, and we're going to um, he's saying, okay, listen, this isn't just the slave that ran away from you. This is this is my son. So this is, if you love me, you love my son. And he says, this is what I'm asking you to do. I'm, he's going to be profitable for you. At one point, he was unprofitable. But now he's been with me. He's got salvation. He's got Jesus. He's been washed in the blood thoroughly. He's got victory in his heart. He's been working hard. The word's been going out by him here in Rome. Things are going good, and it's time you two reconcile. Only one thing, his mother didn't love him. She gave him a messed up name. <laughs> There's a whole lot of messed up names. In the, there was a you gem- can't even pronounce it. That's yeah, no, no. It is. I can hear the word it said by someone three or four times, and I'm still going to mess it up. I'll eventually get it right. But someone along the way is going to be like, dude, man, you botched his name. Trust me, there's a whole lot of names that we've got in the English language now that are a lot worse than this. These guys there's, know I always shorten up the names when I'm giving a message. I, I, always, I always try to figure out a different name. You know there was a whole lot of this. Uh, yeah, go along with – go along. and then he'd have to say his own name. <laughs> there was a whole lot of that. Yeah. Go along with him. That, that feller there. Yeah, that feller there. Okay, so – um, whom I have sent again. So here in this letter, he's he's sending Onimus back to Philemon with this letter saying, hey, that listen, was flawless, brother. That, one. that was the flawless that time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going to say, nah, man, someone's doing the shot game. How many times he can say the name wrong? Someone's already <laughs> drunk. We'll have some comments. Well, it, it won't be anyone in Tennessee, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they're down around Gatlinburg, and then that's a whole other story. And uh, but anyway, um, not to downplay the word of God, um, but he is identifying this. This is now almost this is my son. So it's like if you value me, if you love me, you love my son. So he's saying he you need to receive him back now, whom I would have retained with me, that in thy stead he might have ministered unto me in the bonds of the gospel. So he's saying it's a blessing to have him here, but I really can't keep him. So the Holy Spirit is obviously saying it's time for him to go back. There's things that he needs to do. If he is going to be a complete Christian, he's got to deal with this issue. You can do something wrong in your life, and you can seemingly repent for it, and you feel like everything's gone, but if you haven't dealt with it realistically, I mean, if there's – if there is something major you've done and you haven't dealt with it, then you need to deal with it. And that's what that's what the Lord is obviously saying to Paul. It's like, hey, listen, it's time for Onimus, Onesimus to go home and deal with this. And here's what I want you to tell Philemon. I was like, this isn't the slave that ran away. This isn't the slave that stole from you. This is my child. This isn't just Paul calling him my son. This is the Holy Spirit. This is God. This is Jesus Christ saying this is my child. So got to keep that in mind. Keep that in the forefront. So when you're going to welcome someone back in, we've all been wronged by someone, and it's difficult. There's a really good book, uh, Working Your Way Through Grief. 
and um, and um, and I botched the title of the book, but um, a really good book. And one of the things is going through and learning how to release yourself from where someone has hurt you. Hmm. You need to go through, if you were the one that was wronged and you think that person's going to walk up to you and apologize, no. You need to go ahead and release yourself from the situation because all you're doing is continuing to give them the power. They have the power over you because you will not forgive. And that's that's what we're trying to learn here. And I'm trying to group this in with your, your last political note, and it's going to be a tough, it's going to be a hard sell and a hard stretch. <laughs> um, you're just going to have to look at it like abstract art. You're going to have to turn your head sideways and squint your eyes like that. And uh, <laughs> that way you can look at this and go, oh, yeah, I see what he's saying. Um, uh, well, I've, I've done that plenty. You go to the art gallery and they go, oh, don't you see it? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Lying through my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> There's a few more people I know that are like that. You see that deer out there? Yeah, yeah. You don't really know. <laughs> okay. I'll take a picture and show you later. Um, but, okay. That's its mom. So. <laughs> You we'll get to that, that in the family, we'll get into that just, the family we'll portion. The family portion, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it would be good for him to be here with me, but he's got to come home. He's got to deal with this. So, um, but without thy mind would I do nothing, that thy benefit should not be as it were of necessity, but willingly. For perhaps he therefore departed for a season that thou shouldest receive him forever, not now as a servant but above a servant a brother a beloved especially to me but how much more unto thee both in the flesh and in the lord so this is almost that moment it almost feels like paul's kind of laying on a little extra thick it's like listen now this is you're a christian you love the lord we got to forgive our enemies you know the the 23rd psalm says the lord maketh a table in the in the pre, in my presence for my enemies. So, you know, here's here's this. So it's like your enemy's gonna sit at your table with you. Well, here's someone that realistically time has passed. Well, time usually heals all wounds, but it don't always do that, especially if you feel wronged. A lot of people hold on to it and uh, and that's what we that's what Paul's trying to get him to get past. So he's telling him it's like Get past this. This is about you, the Lord, and Onimis. Oh, 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 no, must, oh, must, <laughs> oh, must. We must learn this guy's name eventually. Say Nemus. Onesimus. Hey, he's probably count. got a nickname somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good call there. Probably on like, hey, Nemo. Uh, <laughs> uh, not now as a servant. But uh, above a servant, a brother beloved, especially to me, but how much more unto thee, but in the flesh and in the Lord. If thou count me, therefore, a partner, receiveth him as myself. So he's saying, you see him, you see me. Okay? So he's not the slave that ran from you. You see me. He's coming to give you letters on the church of uh Colossia, and this letter. So this letter is written on his behalf, but there are letters that were sent to the church at Colossia where uh, Philemon was. And so there was letters that were specifically sent to the church, and then there was a private letter that was sent to Philemon. This is the private letter that was, in essence, sent to Philemon, but it is listed in Scripture for our edification to to realize every now and then we've got to welcome a brother home. And, uh, you know, the, the prodigal son, another good example of this situation. Um, but as we continue on, he's like, um, I will, um, I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. I will repay it. I'll bet um, I do not say to thee, how thou owest unto me even thine own self besides. 
Yea, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Refresh my bowels in the Lord, having confidence in thy obedience. I wrote unto thee, knowing that thou wilt also do more than I say. But withal, prepare me also a lodging, for I trust that thou that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. There salute thee, Epirus, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Marcus, Articus, Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborers, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Written from Rome to Philemon by Onimus, a servant. All righty. So, all righty. I want to hold on to that spot there. So what we've got, what are we looking at time-wise there? Two and a half minutes? All righty. Okay. So, all right. So what we've got here is a gentleman that there is a, a wrong that was taken place against Philemon. Uh, whether it can be truly proven, it is, it's kind of up for debate. But for whatever reason, it just seems as though something was stolen, an amount of money or an object. Um, I don't know that it, I wasn't able to find it in Scripture. But um, he makes his way to Rome, Onimus does, and comes into Paul's, comes into it's like, okay, Paul can figure this stuff out for me. If anyone can figure this out, I'll go see Paul. So Paul gets him right, gets him straightened out, gets him gets him working for the Lord. The Lord says, all right, it's time for him to go home. Now, there's letters that need to be sent to the church, letters to, um, to edify them and to grow them, but they need to reconcile. It's good for him to be here, but it's time for this brother to get home. So it's, it's now time for Philemon to um, forgive, and we never really forget. But it is critical that if Christ goes through, and as far as our sins are concerned, when he forgives them, he casts them into, into the sea of, I mean, as far as the east is from the west. So if that's going to be the case, if Christ's going to forgive you to the point that he doesn't remember it, into the sea of forgetfulness, and uh, which I've never seen that sea, and I must be a lot of times in the midst of it because I forget a lot of stuff. <laughs> and you're here. I'm here. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> We're closing in, and that's why it's critical. Every now and then, it's like when someone wrongs you. If we don't go through and f- figure out how to release ourselves, whether they want to be released or not, whether they even consider it. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, there's, yeah, that's that's one way, but that doesn't really release you. It just gives you a different pain to to deal with. Um, <laughs> you've got to step out if you've got undo wrong in your life. You've got to surrender that, and if it is against another brother, another sister in Christ, admit that with them. Get with them and bring it out, and you know, identify that sin and get rid of it. And if they are truly the believer that they're supposed to be, they'll receive you and receive you with gladness, you know, not with a knife in the back, as Alan was uh, so graciously <laughs> well, shot. I, I think he might, was, might have been talking about uh, measured by grain. Is that about right? Uh, sure. Yeah. Sure. By, by, by um, millimeters, maybe? Whatever. Yeah. yeah. But the, the be- beautiful thing. Uh, by any means necessary. 175 <laughs> to 180 grain. 40 cow. Yeah. Um, but another good example of forgiving for someone's wrong would have been Joseph and his brothers. Now, in verse uh, chapter 50, verse 20, um, he's kind of pretty much kind of at his deathbed, and he kind of lets his family know it's like what you meant for evil, God meant for good. So, you know, the way you guys treated me, me ending up down in Egypt, ending up at Potiphar's house, getting thrown in jail for two or three years, and then finally getting to come out after, after the baker, finally, uh, or no, the cupbearer, cupbearer, you can shake your head, it's cupbearer or the baker. 
Tony's like, uh. <laughs> She's like, oh, sure. Just put me on the spot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you turned him red as my microphone. <laughs> the baker? Sure baker. baker, okay. Yeah. I'm, that's The baker kept coming to mind, but I was like, oh. Um, I'm pretty sure the cupbearer Yeah, cupbearer got get decapitated. Um, but the baker got to come back to the king. So the dream was seen. And finally, Pharaoh has a dream. And he's like, hey, I can't figure this out. He's like, oh, hey, by the way, I think I knew a guy in prison that done the same for me and the can- and the cupbearer. And, well, I lived because of you. And cupbearer died at your hand also. So out comes Joseph. Ends up, you know, the only one more powerful than Joseph was Pharaoh himself. And Pharaoh had pretty much said, I'm going to sit over here on my throne. You take care of it all. So it's like, realistically, Joseph was king. Pharaoh was just chilling. There. He was chilling. He's like, yeah. I've got total dominion and total power, but you have the authority. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. Well, the, the the best leaders delegate, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, <laughs> everything but eating the grapes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There's always a little wrath to that. Yeah. Boy, that baker must have been a bad baker because he got his head chopped off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But, uh, well, that's not a way to get ahead in life. No. No, no it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> so, in the end, his brothers, the famine comes in. His brothers end up having to come down. They don't recognize him. He recognizes them. It's like, all right. So, we're going to send them back, put all their money in their bags. They, they get this for free. They take off. They see all they've got, all their money. It's like, oh, shoot. All right, let's just go back, play dumb. So they head home. Grain's gone. It's like, all right, well, shoot. All right, go back and get some more. It's like, <laughs> uh, well, here's the thing. We got all our money back, and we don't know how it got in our bags. So it's the opposite. It's the opposite? Yep. Okay. Kept 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 the cut bear. All righty, all righty. Kept the cut bear. All righty. So oh hey. So those that comment, those we, that we comment, live, we've we live fact checked. Yes, we we've <laughs> got we've got live fact checkers, and we we keep on top of it. We don't want to tell anyone any lies. Admonish him. We got the experts in the back room. <laughs> yes, yes, we keep the experts. And uh, they're, thanks, they're, they're, they're behind the billboards. And the, well, they well, never turn the cameras around their fake news. Well, that's, uh, <laughs> uh, well, Sterling is not part of the fake news. Sterling is part of the the gifted group. Of, yeah, the uh, perfect producer. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Sterling. Greatly appreciate that. We'll correct that. That's a beautiful thing. So um, he gets to see his brothers. They have to come back again. All right. So now they're like, oh, well, all right, well, Somehow or other, we left and we had our money bags, but here's all the money and here's more money for the next batch. So he sends them back again with all their money and this time his cup. Mm. And then he sends one of his guys after him. It's like, hey, whoever's got the cup in the bag, that's the one that's got to stay here with me. So he's like, hey, listen, you got another brother? Uh, yeah, actually we had another brother, but he died. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink, wink. And, uh, if something happens to his youngest son, uh, our father's going to die and that's going to be it. And, and man, here we go. It's like, all right, only way you guys get this brother, you bring the other brother. So back home they go. And it's like, this ain't happening. It's like, if you don't bring him back, it's like, you can kill all my family. I just got to send him. That way we can secure our brother. All righty. We're getting that notion that we need to kind of move on. They but hung, they, hung the, uh, they, hung the baker. they hung the baker. Okay. Yes. They hung mm. the baker. And, bad uh, cooking. Bad cooking. Well, I'm guessing the yeast he was using might have had a little bit of strychnine in it. And he, he was trying he, to get to He the, didn't need that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he didn't need that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> and now uh, Alan is ready to leave the floor for that dad joke. Well, I had to cook that one up for you, Alan. <laughs> I'll get that. Uh, man, goodness. All right. <laughs> we're, 
He's on a roll with that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My jokes are on the rise. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> These are all baking terms. <laughs> I think my wife. Nothing like mansplaining to a man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in the end, here we go. We're going to finish this. We're going to wrap this up. He had to go through and present himself to his brothers, weeping with bitter tears. He showed that he was who he was, that he was Joseph, their brother. And, and he embraced them with love and affection, not as someone that was ready to kill them all off. Which I mean, realistically, he could have realistically done, and he could have had know, full revenge. He could have had full Easily. revenge, and because uh, at this point in time, now he had his real brother, um, Benjamin, which was the baby of the bunch. Um, Joseph and Benjamin were um, Leah's, no, Rachel, Rachel's offsprings. One or the other. Yeah, Let's right. Move forward, because <laughs> Leah. <laughs> we'll have somebody comment about it. <laughs> there was two sisters, correct. Leah yeah. and Rachel. Yeah, we went, went over that story. Yeah, no. So, yeah. Claire was here. So, um, anyway, that's a whole nother. But um, regardless, he presented himself and, and showed forgiveness and compassion. He received his brothers in love. So when someone has wronged you, receive that brother back in love. It doesn't mean that... They're 100% forgiven. It means that you are releasing yourself from the crime that was committed against you. That way you're not harboring pain and frustration that is unneeded on your life. God's got good things for you. If, if Christ is willing to forgive the sins of all, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, but Christ died that all may come to repentance. So knowing that, that is why we have to welcome our brother home. It's the yeast you can do. Yes. Yes, it is the Thanks, yeast Alan. you can do. <laughs> All right, man, alive. We didn't know that the baker, the candlestick maker, and the cup bearer was going to have such a good time today. Yeah, that's, that's all you could do. Yes. Right? Yeah. Do, re, mi, fa, so. <laughs> It was a uh, baker on a rope. <laughs> I just had to lean into it. So. Exactly. Uh, anyhow, uh, go back to like the the comment on the the deer butts in particular. Uh, the deers uh, when you were talking about taking pictures of deer or seeing no, deer, wasn't just seeing deer. Um, my, my mom, uh, she's the only person I know that's ever been unsuccessful at taking a picture of deer when she sees it. She every time uh, we we get out and about and we. We, we see deer with, we'll oh, look, mom, deer. And she'll, she'll inevitably get her camera or phone out. And she's fumbling all around. I don't know how she manages to, to miss it every single time. And in all fairness, when she does get the photo, it's always of the deer's butts. It's never of the deer. <laughs> let's just keep in mind, <laughs> let's, let's kind of break this down. Because usually when we stop our vehicle to take a picture of a deer, the deer takes three seconds to look at you. And then he does what, Louie? He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> so, so in all fairness, your your mother's exploits of white tails um, <laughs> is is humorous to a degree, but at the same time, um, I, it's an ongoing thing. Well, like it never well happens right, for right her. now. Right now, um, she is in need of two um, eye surgeries. She has yeah, what's uh, called what, has, yeah. what is called Fuchs dystrophy. And it's taking her vision um, now, a lot yeah. quicker than I'd like it to. Um, so she can still see, but, I mean, there's there's things that are far away. And um, when you see a deer, a, a brown speck across the field, I see it somewhat clearly. I can see it, and I can make it out. But um, she loses it in the background. It just becomes green-brown blob. And so that's – it's – and a little bit unfair for well now yeah I mean yes now but this has gone over like even but, when we yeah. were young and and she yeah. did have her vision about her well and inevitably I mean I I think we've all taken pictures of deer backsides uh, the white tail of a deer quite quite often uh, there's times when you're ready and the thing is is you never know when to be ready when it comes to a deer being to no, where you can take don't. a picture so unless you've got the camera already out 
and all you got to do is quick hit record, that's about the time you're going to catch them or they're at a good distance from That's you. my problem. Every time I see a deer, I'm going for my phone, but he's gone by then. <laughs> that's, why you, that's why you shoot the deer first. <laughs> <laughs> Hold <shot> still. <laughs> and then you still walk behind it and take a shot from the back. <laughs> Like, hold, hold him up! Hold him up! Hold, him up. <laughs> hold the tail up! <laughs> make it look, make it look natural. Oh, yes. <laughs> Just get the picture of the butt. That's for Kim. <laughs> That's yeah. my mom. Ugh. <laughs> Leave the carcass. I am sorry for that. <laughs> Nobody has any need for that. I do. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh man! Nothing look. like a good back strap. It, um, it, it, I'd, I'd like to go hunting soon enough for yeah. sure. Uh, I know that. Well, deer season. I've is, been trying is, to get you to go. Yeah, yeah I just got to get my uh, my hunting license to go with you. We can get get some of these. Uh, All we had to do is buy it. I got the guns. We could go and do it. I'm ready. We go to Spencer. Go out. And it's really fun. cold. It's really early in the morning. Got to oh, put. I've, I've done it. Deer urine on your boots. I'm not a. I'm not a fan. I'm not. A, <laughs> I'm not a fan of hunting. I love outdoor stuff, but I. I don't know. I hate. I hate hunting, hmm. unless it's for mushrooms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Now, the question is, have you found any lion's mane before, ever? That type of mushroom. I, yeah, I don't think so. I'm, I'm looking for morels. <laughs> okay, all righty, all right. So there's, um, let's see here. There's several different types that are very much on the edible side. And uh, Was that, What, truffles? You just, you just truffles l- are another kind, right? Just lick every one of them and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying it's to figure practice. out where, the, where did the guy that found out, it says, man, if you lick the underside of this... This mushroom, man, the trip you get. The one that very specifically grows on manure. (laughs) 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 It's a very rotting rotting wood and manure. Crappy mushroom. (laughs) For real? (laughs) That's good. It, it, those are the nah, when no, they when they grow them on like cow pies and stuff. That's that's for their um, uh, like it's not psilocybin, but uh, that they're they're mushrooms that make people. Uh, See stuff like like, uh, Uh, hallucinate. Hallucinogenic. Yeah, that's it. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Oh, I thought uh, mushrooms were. Um, Th- there are a psilocybin made mushroom, on, on, and then there's a waste. Um, there's another kind of mushroom out there that that does, it's like it's, it's another psychedelic of of sorts. I don't want to get too far in those. Uh, I was about to stop eating mushrooms. If that's the problem. No, 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 no. Now, the ones no, you get no, at the grocery no. store, you're good. That those are yeah. those are okay. the ones that just go on your on your pizza or in yeah. your. I keep salad. trying to sell them though. I keep trying to sell. Them. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Yeah, morels, uh, morels in a few areas had a really, really stellar year. Uh, my cousin, I think, within two or three trips, had about well Wait, on mushrooms. Three. Yes, and a trip on mushrooms, or four mushrooms. Four, four mushrooms. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> just four. <laughs> That's all it said. Just four. No, just. Uh, but they <laughs> pulled pulled about two hundred out of three trips. Wow, wow. That's a lot so, of money. So to say the least, it was a whole lot of good eating. That's a lot I of just money. didn't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I know that uh, our good friend Bo, he he's a he's a regular uh, mushroom uh, hunter too. He he loves going out and getting the morels. He knows he's got a spot. He'll post pictures on Facebook of the of the morels up close, and then people go, "Where's that at?" I ain't giving you my spot. <laughs> Y'all be all up in my spot. <laughs> the only place I go to go hunting for uh, mushrooms is at the store. <laughs> the only place I know. Exactly. Kroger aisle three. Aisle three, Portobello. <laughs> Portobello. Throw it, throw on a little meat, a little bit of cheese, melt it all down, cut it up. Mm-hmm. I love mushrooms. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They had some, uh, I can see on the, the subject of mushrooms, might as well, might as well right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, because it has so much to do with the message that we just gave. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a fun you conversation. You thought we went a rabbit hole earlier, Sterling. <laughs> just listen to this one. It's a fun conversation. <laughs> No, we went to uh, the Red Lobster there. You know, uh, um, they had the, the the stuffed mushrooms. Yeah, there, those are pretty good. A little bit of crab meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Laura actually uh, ate a couple of those, and she didn't know that there was seafood in it. Yeah, and she enjoyed them. Uh, Don't tell her. She doesn't see this episode. She will never know. And I'll just keep having her. <laughs> <laughs> and tomorrow morning it's at at uh, eleven thirty, <laughs> we will get a call. I'll eat the mushroom, Josh but not the dead. crab. <laughs> what, what'd you do? I'll eat the mushroom, but not the crab. Well, it's uh, they, they put little in in there that the stuffed mushrooms. It's like cheese and like pieces, little pieces of crab, and 
is all that, that stuff. Is that the waste from some animal? Crab? Not no. crap. Oh, crab. 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 Oh, oh, oh. Like, like, like. Turn the pee upside down. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Crabby. Yeah. Misunderstood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, this game. <laughs> you know, like when I get out in the sun too long and I get like it all. <laughs> he looks like a lobster. <laughs> <laughs> One that has been well boiled. Boiled. Yeah. yeah. Louis's been there for a couple sunburns when I've been through, boy. Yeah. And, uh, it, it, he, he laughs at me every time. <laughs> No, and I can. And uh, he'll I make can, fun of me too. He'll say, "Well, I don't sunburn yeah. that bad." And say, of course you don't. <laughs> I can attest. There is, there are been times coming back to our message and and uh, just kind of from a family perspective, um, any family that is is now a product of um, a divorce there is healing that still needs to take place. And this is, this is the type of message that this is kind of, kind of geared towards. It's, you know, yeah. it's the healing of bringing the family back things. Um, Cause a lot of times the children don't understand. I was going to um, bring that up. It messes know, they, up their mind. Yeah. It can mess them up in such a way that, you know, they don't understand. So if you don't have that conversation with them, then you're kind of, they're kind of left, a pointing the finger at one of the parents or both the parents or pointing the finger at themselves. They blame me. And, uh, well, you got broad shoulders, so (laughs) you you, you carry it as long as you can, but you you remind them, it's like, hey, listen, uh, I'm sorry for for the actions, my actions, um, and my wrongdoings. And it's critical to kind of go through that and, and to try to grow back. Uh, the beautiful thing about, uh, well, since we've talked about mushrooms, um, shiitake mushrooms, um, you can farm a shiitake mushroom and you can build a shiitake log. One of the ways to kind of go through and get that log to start um, kind of growing the shroom is kind of a little bit of physical activity. You, you kind of got to beat it up just a little bit. Um, so in life, we get beaten up by those that are trying to grow us. And um, in those times of that pain and suffering, we, we don't, in the moment, we see it as hurt. We don't see the end result. So there is growth that has to take place. Um, growth through pain is is probably the, the hardest to grow through versus, which is basically adversity. And so when we go through adversity and we come out stronger on the other side, that's when we've got great victories that are taking place in our life. Mm -hmm. So um, welcome the growth, be willing to forgive, grow from it, and and don't harbor it. Um, Why give yourself an ulcer? Why give yourself a... Not too late for that. I've already got got a couple of them. (laughs) Heartburn, um, you know frantic headaches what i took from that was get beat up too much and you'll be full of shiitake mushrooms <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. you know, yeah. well you, you could perceive it in that fashion it's fair fair produce produce a tasty fungus yes yeah. but i mean that's what it is that's what mushrooms are that's exactly what it is yeah. so you know it was a different way that's to look at the analogy guy. but uh you know yes well, we have to put a little bit of levity on it yes of course yeah um it kind of it's all serious all day long. Yes, cool. you keep it too serious, someone's going to fall asleep. Someone's got to constantly go. Ugh. That way, you know, you know what's going on. <laughs> he kept Sterling awake. <laughs> it's just totally like, what the heck? He was nodding off over there. What he, the heck? He, he made that noise. He's back. <laughs> he's back with us. The camera was starting to jump jump down a little bit there, but he's back with us. Everything's steady now. Yeah, no, it's not quite the uh, the gentleman on uh, Mister Mrs. Doubtfire that guy that was discussing the dinosaurs this is a brontosaurus oh yeah <laughs> that, that, uh, he is a herbivore this is a tyrannosaurus rex he uh, is i like a uh, uh, robin williams comment on him he says he says oh, I, love, I love that guy i grew up listening to him he goes he has the warmth of a snow a pea, pea. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and as a kid I, I misinterpreted that, you know, because I was th- I didn't think snow like peeing in the snow. I thought of like 
peas, like the vegetable in snow. I'm like, what? why did they? Why does he put in pea in the snow? And then <laughs> years later, he years later, that. Aha! Uh, years later, I'm writing my name in the snow, and I'm going, oh. <laughs> 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 Someone in the comments is going, he still missed the joke. That's, that's just like uh, Jeff Foxworthy on his uh, the mailbox, M-A-L-E. No one said anything about that. It meant it for a joke, but the only thing that come out of it is, shouldn't that M be capitalized? <laughs> Nobody got it. <laughs> Nobody got it. So, But there'll be someone that'll get it, and they'll be like, comment. Um, but, yeah. Through adversity, we've got to learn how to to respond and getting getting release from situations. Um, and that happens through conversations with conversations. your fr- friends, and family, friends, family, communication, and yes, overall co- uh, continued communication. As long as we continue to communicate, there's there's way for us to get victory. Uh, it frees you. It helps you to heal in such a fashion. Um, the scar will still be there. But it's just a scar. It's it's not a scab that can eventually, you know, you bump it, it starts to bleed again, or if you, or it gets infected. Once it's a scar, it's it. You're kind of at the end. It's, then, then it's just a story. Then it's just a story. Yeah, it's, it's one you can go back to and reference and say, well, this so scar's just, from. So this is this is from this, this situation, and I see that you're getting in a similar situation. Here's how I handled it. I've talked to the Lord. I, I've seen seen where you go. Take the conversation to the Lord first before you you go through. Especially if you see someone going through something that's similar, talk to the Lord. It may not be your job to say anything unless it was in between you and them. But even at that point, take it to the Lord. Lord, this is what I'm getting ready to do. Give me guidance. Give me wisdom. Give me understanding. Not to say something stupid. Because let's face it. Last time I checked, we're all flesh. There's going to be that moment that we're going to say something stupid. I do that all the time. And then, then you got people that don't want to hear it, and they yeah, tell you to mind ex- your ex- business. Exactly. I mean, my life is basically just a couple of pauses between me saying something stupid. <laughs> you and me are the same, brother. That, that was when the, <laughs> and <laughs> and I continue. Uh, well, it's it's always those moments where like I'll say something uh, because I, have, I generally have a quick wit. Like that's where Alan and I are the same. And, uh, and then I immediately go, I'm, I'm going to be chewing on my shoes for a while. And then I just, I breeze right past it as though it didn't happen because if I, if I stop and I pause and I go back and like, Oh, I apologize for that. Uh, people will dwell on it. So if sooner I can change the subject, the sooner I can get away from it and then I'll beat myself up over it later. <laughs> but that's, that's my, that's my way out for a little while yeah. until I can bounce it off of these guys go, you know, I said this and, and it was, it was dumb. And they're like, Oh, don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's always going to be those times that, those situations come up and um, I know Alan um, you've been working in a good direction to strengthen your relationship with your daughter okay I was afraid of who I was strengthening a relationship with <laughs> yes <laughs> yes and so that's you know um, during during this time it's kind of been a struggle have you guys had uh, I'm going to kind of pick on you a little bit because I know Louis's situation he's still struggling to um, work through with his kids and everything. So, like, this is going to be a long conversation. So have you had good conversations with your daughter over life about your relationship with your ex and your relationship with her, herself, and going forward? I mean, that doesn't make for a good eulogy. You just blame (laughs) all of the world's problems on everyone else and tell her how perfect I am. Oh, okay. (laughs) I don't plan on living as long as the rest of them. All righty. So then I just got to like stuff all this in really quickly. In other words, Alan is, so, hey, listen, I'll give you $30,000 if you will say that he was a great man. He's like, (laughs) all right. He gets all the way through the eulogy and it says, he was a great man compared to his brother. (laughs) <laughs> no, I, we have we have a ton of talks i mean she basically i mean she just i, I get the opportunity to impart a lot in her good this feels really weird holding the microphone by the way this yeah, is i don't know why you did that. this was supposed to be propish you know just like okay now that i'm being interviewed 
Um, now it just feels <laughs> awkward. Anyway, um, he's, not like a, he's not a stand-up comedian, so it's, he's not finding uh, it natural. No, 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 not at all. But like I said, I've had I've had plenty of opportunities to impart a lot of things, a lot of things in her. And and now that she's in middle school, middle school is that moment when you know it, everything kind of gets dirty. Life gets dirty, right? Like oh it's, yeah, you oh, have yeah. elementary where everybody is kind of they're all kids, they know their kids. You're all awkward. <laughs> you, you have high school where everyone's kind of going. I need to become an adult and figure this out. And then you have middle school where, well, you know, everyone thinks they're something or they have to be something. Yeah. And so this last year has actually been kind of a blessing because, you know, she's had a lot of highs and lows and a lot of questions. And, and you know, that's all kind of been my job. Yeah. I mean, her mom definitely kicks in. Her mom does a great job. But yeah. she's with me a lot. And, and we have the same sleep schedule. So she's with me a lot. So I have a lot of those conversations. Okay, with good, good. And see, that that's critical. That's critical. That's, that's important because um, there's... Now, have you had have you had to have some real hard conversations? Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. some, some really rough ones. Yeah, I, I can honestly say I think for both the boys, the birds and the bees was the hardest one <laughs> for them. It's like because I was just as blunt and as evil as possible. I'm like, it was a little better than the one I got. It's like here's a box of condoms. Don't screw up. Well, <laughs> you, you know, and the weird thing is having a daughter. Um, you got to explain that. Right. But oh, then, yeah. But then you also have to explain that intent. men are pigs. Uh, you have to explain intent. Right. Like yeah. you have to be like, I, I know this seems innocent or I know this seems this kind of way, but take it from me. Yada, 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 yada. Right. Yeah. Um, so stay in your lane. Focus on what you're you know, focus on your horizon. Yeah. And uh, make that happen. So. Well, I also give her um, and I'll say this for any any father that has a daughter. Um, one of the things that you want to instill in her is how a man should treat a woman. And if you go through and do that, and that's, that's take them out on date nights and, and, you know, buy the flowers, open the door, show them what a, a real man looks like. When, when, when you see that gentleman, then they won't be like so many girls nowadays. They just, you know, it's like, they have a boyfriend for they're they're on and off with a boyfriend for four or five years, and it's like, why are you guys keep doing this? Well, he cheats, I cheat, and it's like, okay, then you guys didn't learn anything. I was like, quit selling yourselves short. If you keep following this path, this is this is the only path you're going to know. So um, give them a good example, give them a good understanding. A lot of girls, they just don't know who to pick. They always pick the wrong guy, the bad guy. Yeah. The guy that does no good. Yeah. And that's why it's critical to to learn how to have these conversations, to bring our brothers home, bring our sisters home with a good understanding of truth, value, the love of God, the love of family, um, all the good conservative things that need to take place. In a world of uncertainty, in a world of misguided direction, By in gold. a world no, that's not it. <laughs> of so many wrong, we have three topics that we'll get to in just a second. What you got there, Lee? Three. The one thing about girls, they should find a man that works. Yes, that's a, a good start. A lot you, of these men don't like start. working anymore. Good, yeah, a, get a good. man that could work, support you, and protect you. Yeah. Don't get one of these bums that just hanging around in the streets and making money and um, taking money out of you. And yeah, absolutely. Which is a lot of the same things that our political system does, and I think it's a good time to jump into that political well, portion. Just just before we do it, okay. you reminded me. Of right. a, you okay. reminded me of a real quick story. Real quick real story. Quick story. Real Talk quick story. The, the just <laughs> remember, Sterling, I tried to keep this rolling. <laughs> There's, no, it's a real quick story because. Diddy. <laughs> so uh, uh, I went on. Uh, I went out uh, with one of my friends to go, who was going to a movie, uh, but he had he had brought a date along, uh, and I, I was already married. So you were the third wheel. I was the third wheel on this date. Okay. But we were going to see a comic book movie, so we were both. You know, me and me and him are both very geeky. Uh, and, oh, and, so and, and, she was the third wheel. <laughs> so you yeah. and he were on a date, and she was the third wheel. Okay, all right. She was leaning over like, "Can I have some popcorn already?" Like, no, they're, this is, this is, they're leaning into each other, watching the movie. This is this is special -ish edition Spider-Man popcorn. Now, uh, <laughs> now uh, she was she was uh, a little bit geeky too, but we had, we definitely talked more about the movie afterwards. But yeah. um, we both get out of the car, and he looks back. And she's still sitting in the car. Yeah. 
he, he looks at me. He goes, why is she still sitting there? I was like, she's waiting for you to open the door. He goes, what? I was like, yeah, that's, that's what you do when you're on a date. He's like, well, I've taken her out a, a couple of times. And I was like, no, no, no. If this is supposed to be a formal date to her, she believes that you're going to go over there and open the door. And so he does. He goes over there and he opens the door. And she goes, thank you. I was waiting so long. <laughs> Wow. I never did that in my life. I used to tell her, get in. That's it. <laughs> but Laura, Laura, I had to, I, I still have troubles. Like she won't, she won't wait for me to come around. She's just like, I'm just going to get out. <laughs> I'm just going to get out. There, there's times I don't mind that. And then there's other times that, listen, if you're waiting for me, we're going to be here for a while because <laughs> I've got to crawl out, put the hip back in, put both knees back in place, straighten back up. Yeah, well, the back it's a then, different story if you're hurting. Yeah, <laughs> then walk around the vehicle. Yeah. I was like, by the time I'm done, we've already burnt thirty minutes. Yeah, that's what happens when you abuse your body. So take care of yourselves, each and every one. Speaking of um, abusing your body, take your vitamins. Yes, yeah, take, take, your take your vitamins. Take your vitamins. Yes, take your vitamins. That's Alan's new tagline, by the way. Take your vitamins. All yeah. right. Um, but uh, speaking of ruining your body. Um, Someone named Hunter Biden might have ruined his. Uh, coming for our first story this week, uh, Daily Caller. Uh, Secret Service confirms cocaine found in White House following Hunter Biden visit. <laughs> Gee, I wonder whose cocaine that was. Was it in a 50 <laughs> or was it in a dollar? <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know who it belonged to. <laughs> it might have belonged to the big guy. That explains a lot. Uh, anyway, the U.S. Secret Service has confirmed that cocaine was found at the White House on the uh, eve of the 4th of July. The discovery of which prompted a West Wing evacuation, according to ABC News. Secret Service agents discovered the substance in the West Wing on Sunday, uh, two days after President Joe Biden's son, Hunter, was seen leaving the building. Hmm. <laughs> That's curious. As part of a routine security sweep of the building and initially suspected uh, it was anthrax, prompting an evacuation of the building. The agency confirmed that the substance was, was in fact cocaine Wednesday after conducting a drug test, according to ABC News. Cocaine. Uh, it is unclear how cocaine, which is a Schedule II drug under the Controlled Substances Act and, and illegal to possess under the fe under federal law, entered the building. Mm, okay, yeah. let's just take a second. <laughs> mm. Now, the last time I checked, if you are in possession of said um, cocaine uh, substance cl class two, that's a felony. Ergo, you get to take a ride. And that is technically supposed to be Biden's house mm -hmm. with Kamala bringing up the rear of some sorts. Mm -hmm. um, shouldn't both of them left in cuffs? Just saying, you know, just. Yeah. I mean, you it's, know. it's the house it was found in. Did you yeah. have something there? Else? Yeah. I'm good. Okay, cool. <laughs> He's like, I've got something, but I'm saving it for no. later. <laughs> no, I lost the timing. Mm -hmm. uh, White House staff members are required to disclose uh, narcotic, narcotic and psychotropic drug use uh, and are prohibited from using them, which should go without saying, with, with some being dismissed for having consumed cannabis in 2021. I wonder who they were. Uh, staff members... Of <laughs> well, over half of the staff, I'm pretty sure, because I'm most certain that well, someone, it, it rhymes or with, not all... rhymes with Olama. Olama? Okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Everybody that hanged out with Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> probably everyone that's hanging out with Joe. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only way they can get through his speeches. Uh, staff members often... It sounds real good when you're high. <laughs> you see those uppers. <laughs> Take a couple hits, and he really sounds smart. You get a couple lewds oh or something. Oh, my gosh. You know, this is probably... Could you picture it? They're doing... They're setting up to write his speeches. I'm most certain I feel like it's confident. It's that 70s show when they decided to record themselves it's like man we have some of the smartest and best conversations when we're high so let's record them so we can remember what we said yeah that's exactly what the show was it's like so literally they record it and then they're like in the world we sound like a bunch of idiots and then it's <laughs> like so i mean literally it's like okay that's a that's a press release of joe biden's speeches what's her name the press con conference oh um kareen jean pierre pierre yeah. She said that um, Hunter and her family, they were out. They were um, nowhere around the yeah. White House. They were on vacation. Yeah, they, yeah. they left. David. For, apparently, they left for a snow day. <laughs> 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 Bam! <Yeah. laughs> good one, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> uh, uh, said Kareem shop here with a uh, uh, white powdered donut on her face. We're looking into it. <laughs> looking into it. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're not sure where it came from, but we're looking into it. Um, uh, staff members often escort friends and acquaintances on West Wing tours, which are not normally part of reg- the regular White House uh, tour route uh, open to the U.S. Uh, open to U.S. citizens. So that means that there is a specific route that this mm-hmm. was on. This was not where the, the public goes. Okay. So this is only friends and sta- fr- uh, friends staff. of staff members or uh, friends of the White House themselves. Uh, right. Biden and Kamala. The approved individuals can be in this zone, but those that are not approved only get to go through a zone B, not yeah. zone A, zone B. Which I mean, they've they've moved it around three times now, though. By the way, they've been like, it's in the library. It's uh, it's in over here. It's over here. It's over there. They it was with the candlestick. That's where it I was going. Was <laughs> it was with the rope. <laughs> So it's, yeah, I don't know. It's very strange. It I mean, was Mrs. Peacock and honestly, <laughs> in the library. And honestly, if it wasn't for some firefighters talking about this, we wouldn't know anything about this, guys. Yeah. I mean, this became public when firefighters were talking about it. Yeah. And the funny part is that the White House, every time they have them, oh, it's a white people house. Come, they, they have the people come in and, and, and clean. clean up every day. They say they clean up every night. And they check the whole place to make sure nothing is around. So how did that so bag get in there? Somebody dropped well, the, the party a little. It says hard. here the the Secret Service did not confirm whether these tours were the reason cocaine entered the building. The White House did not immediately respond to a request for comment. I wonder why. Uh, I I. <laughs> I, I Cause we're still recovering from the buzz. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because they was up for three or four days at Camp David. <laughs> yeah. Did he drink the water? I feel uh, pretty confident he drank the water at some point. <laughs> he had to drink some kind of water, otherwise his lip would have been glued to the top of his teeth. <laughs> they spray him every three and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised he was at Camp David and not at his, uh, you know, sitting in his Corvette. Mommy used to let me drive this. Now he don't. Now, an excellent driver. Yeah, I'm an excellent driver. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Definitely an excellent driver. Yeah. Excellent driver. Good to see him on right there. <laughs> <laughs> Name that movie reference. Uh, <laughs> excellent driver. Yeah, excellent definitely. Driver. They don't let him start it because all the documents come flying out the exhaust. <laughs> <laughs> well, when he opened up the glove box, I said, well, you know why I pulled you over, sir? Uh, let me just get the registration. <laughs> it's a filing cabinet of all kinds of documents that he took when he was VP. That's great. No, I kind of figure it's probably some stacks of cash uh, wrapped okay. in wrapped in uh, Ukraine um, sleeves. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, Chris so. has been laundered. Yeah. Yeah. Well laundered. Well laundered. You know, <clears throat> I, I don't know how to segue into this uh, unless you got anybody else got. Anything no. Or, no, no, you're, no, you're on no, a, no. Okay, you're out on your own. We're, yeah. we're on a roll. Well, our second article the tonight. Cocaine has hit the ceiling. <laughs> it's hit the fan. It's flowing. It's got everybody up. Yep. <laughs> well, as long as you're awake. Um, <laughs> the, our second article of the night comes from the Post Millennial. Um, Sound of Freedom. That's a that's one new movie uh, uh, talking about oh wow yeah uh, child trafficking. Uh, it whips Disney uh, Indiana Jones with a record for a record Fourth of July box office. Um, <laughs> yeah. I like what you did there. Yeah. Literally, it, it whips. 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 Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's what the post millennial did. They oh, get all the credit. They did it. Okay. They, okay. they got all the credit. Yeah, nice. uh, actually, I like what they did there. In, in particular, uh, let's see here. Who wrote this? Uh, well, I, I don't see the author John right here. Pierre. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Green Jean Pierre. I'm John sure. Pierre. <laughs> She's got all the talent in the world to write something this good. <laughs> but it says, uh, The Sound of Freedom, which was released nationally on the fourth, uh, July 4th. Uh, my dad and I actually went and seen this yes. film. If you get a chance, if you guys need to go see this film. Uh, it, it will it will tug at your heart. and um, it, 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 It's going to more your, your tug at your heart. Your, gonna be your all over emotions the place. are going to be all over the place. There's go- you will leave this film feeling two ways. Uh, one is a deep need for prayer, and and I hate to kind of say it this way, a, a deep need to disembowel people. Is it a true story? Yes, it is. It's, yeah. It is a true story. It's um, a, about uh, FBI ch- child, agent, child trafficking. Trial, child trafficking in, in uh, South America. Um, a federal agent that is working with Homeland Security, He's um, ends up, it starts out with him, we don't want to give, line and give so, away the, the movie yeah. too much, but but well, yeah. There's enough information. Um, 
they put a lot going into this, and in the end, yes, there is still a story to tell. He was searching out a young girl that was sister to a young boy that you um, that he meets early on in the film. And to say the least, he, he takes on a major struggle, and pretty much the United States kind of said, you're on your own. Uh, realistically, you don't work for us. You've got nothing to do with us, so you get caught down there. It's your butt. So you take a bullet, we don't know you. Yeah. And and it's it's pretty bad when when child trafficking it, it's treated in this fashion. And um it, it is it is shameful to it's shameful that it is even going on. And and so many people will go through and say, Why would a loving God allow this stuff? It's like Adam and Eve ate the fruit and brought sin upon us. It's us. It's not God. God can stop it. But then that means he takes away free will. So it is your conscious decision whether or not you're going to be a man or a woman of integrity. And what we uh, have in here is a lot of people that did not have integrity, a lot of people that just had immorality flowing deeply. Um, well, just and, continue on. But what 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 had happened was uh, it launched to number one. A movie in America, thanks to its pay it forward technology. Yeah, Angel Studios distributed Sound of Freedom in uh, in the U.S. on July fourth this week. on On its first day, the movie grossed over fourteen million with runner up Indiana Jones, which opened on June thirtieth, reporting uh, reportedly bringing in eleven point five million, according to Deadline. With Sound of Freedom direct sales bringing in 11.5 uh, $11. million, uh, the Pay It Forward model, uh, a patent pending technology from Angel Studios, the movie brought in adi- an additional $2.6 million in ticket sales, uh, topping Disney's Indiana Jones. According to Deadline, some pre release uh, projections for Sound of Freedom had the movie bringing in, uh, bringing in between 11 to, uh, and $15 million, uh, over a six day span. The movie cracked it, uh, cracked it in one day. Uh, Sound of Freedom is based on the true story of former government agent Tim Ballard, who quit his job in order to avoid the bureaucracy uh, associated with going overseas to rescue children from human traffickers and pedophiles. Uh, the movie tells the story of him rescuing two children and a group of over 50 others. In, a, in the real mission, Ballard and his team saved 123 people. 55 of them were children. There are more slaves today in the world yes. than ever in all of collected history combined. 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 So when, when you, you hear groups going on about, you know, the, their oppression, it's like there's a lot of oppression going on right now, and right you guys now. are more worried about yourself when you need to be worried about what's going on. Children, young adults are being taken from homes, from driveways, from shopping malls, from from trips that they take into Europe. Um, a good example of this is uh, William uh, Liam Neeson's uh, Liam Neeson Liam Neeson's uh, movie Taken uh, when they take his daughter. Um, you know, I I know for me as a father, I you know of sons, I I don't even want to consider. You know anyone taking my sons, but I I kind of wish I had his. I have a particular set of skills. special set of skills, <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it is. It's kind of scary, and let alone to think you know someone that's got a little daughter, or a little girl, um, and right now we we see a society that wants to dress uh, one year olds to look slutty. Um, Kindergartners, they sexualize the children. Yeah, they they make it comfortable comfortable in sexuality, and that's scary because the monsters that are out there look just like you and me. They're not got creepy faces. They're not bleeding. They're not aliens from other worlds. They're men and women. Of ill repute. Yeah, well, and um, actually, when we had uh, Mr. John Schrock on here, he informed us that uh, most times when a child goes missing, it's 
from because of the family. Yeah, it's it's actually within their own family. The 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 mother or the father, they they sell them because they need to. They sell their child because they need to pay rent or they need to, um, or a fix. Uh, yeah, or get that next drug hit or whatever it is. They they sell their children into this, which is the same thing industry that, that goes on even. Um, there's all this is the same type of stuff that was going on back in um, early biblical age. So this isn't uh, it's nothing new. Nothing new, but um, to the extent that this is being done, um, these these children are being trafficked in such a way that they are being abused multiple times a day for profit, mm-hmm. and and. Um, you know, prostitution is bad enough, um, but when Once. prostitution deals with children, that just takes another level of sick. Also, you got to treat your kids good at home. Don't mistreat them because there's a lot of kids running away from home yeah. and getting caught out there yeah. by these traffickers. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Completely. Completely. It, it's... And it comes back to the simple fact that there are moral values that have to be explained, shown, grown into um, our kids, into our lives as adults. It should have been in, been instilled in us. Um, these are conversations that, man, were extreme taboo. I mean, there was, you know, we had a few people that would, you know, you'd, you kind of tell who was, who was a little light in the loafers, and you just let that go. Just they're they're people. That's how, if he wants to act that way, that's fine. Now it's if you don't accept it, you're the bad person, and that's not that's not how our society. That's not how tolerance for. works. Yeah. Well, yeah, the exactly. problem is it's not accept. We we've all pretty much accepted it, but they want us to bow to it. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. Yes. That's the exact right verbiage. <laughs> Yeah. They want us to celebrate it and bow to it. And that's just, that's not okay. No, yeah. no, it's not a, the least. It's a religion. Yes. It is. A, it's like, and it's the dominating religion right now, especially, um, but forced well, upon I, the young I people. I believe through, that they want to, they want to pursue it as the, the, the dominant. Social media is what, 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 what push, uh, pushes I, most I would of probably it. say social media is the, is a, a viable religion. Um, I guess if you wanted to look at it that way, because there's, you're not going to go there. I can't say it on your show. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bunch laughing. of sick people that just wants to control people. That's it. Yeah. Grab, yeah. Control kids. Yeah. And the only way you can control is a kid. You can control them better than a grown up. Yeah. But uh, not to not to let the uh, the mood stay on a, on a downswing. I know that this is a heavy this, subject. So yeah. This, we're this. talking about. I talk about social media. I bring up social media for a reason because it gets us into our last article so that okay. we can. Land this Close plane. This one. <laughs> uh, so the third, third article from tonight comes from Town Hall. White House doubles down on social media censorship. Uh, That's crazy. On Tuesday, July 4th, a federal judge issued a lengthy 155-page injunction against the Biden administration for using big tech to censor Americans on behalf of the federal government. It's like 1984, like right here. We're living in it, right? Yeah. Um, the present case arguably uh, invo- uh, involves the most massive attack against free speech in, the, in United States history. And their attempts to suppress alleged disinformation, the federal government, and particularly the defendants named here, are alleged to have blatantly ignored the First Amendment's uh, right to free speech, uh, Judge Terry uh, uh, Dowdy wrote. Although the censorship alleged in this case uh, almost exclusively targeted conservative speech, the, uh, the issues raised herein go beyond party lines. The right to free speech is not, member, uh, not a member of any political party and does not hold any political ideology. Uh, it is the purpose of free speech, the free speech clause of the First Amendment, to preserve an uninhibited inhibited marketplace of ideas in which truth will ultimately prevail, rather than to uh, rather than, than to countenance monopolization uh, of the market, whether it be by government itself or private licensee. Uh, Doucher continued providing uh, detailed examples. As a result, dozens of federal government agencies have been temporarily barred from communicating with big tech companies. Uh, when asked uh, about the injunction during the daily briefing uh, at the White House uh, Wednesday, press uh, 
Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre, uh, Louis' favorite person in the world, uh, <laughs> said President Biden <laughs> disagrees with the ruling. Uh, Jean-Pierre's uh, Jean comments uh, come after her predecessor openly bragged about pressuring social media companies to remove, quote, harmful information. Thoughts on this, guys? Yeah, I love uh, I love that the government can say, uh, we suppressed you, sure, whatever, but you're not going to tell us we can't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what it comes down to is, oh, yeah, you caught us, um, but screw you. We're going to do what we want to yeah. do. Yeah. And that's just... In this country, I mean, granted, a lot of the same horrible things we see that governments in other countries do, we have it done to us here. Uh, we just don't find out about it until later, or uh, we we somehow put a positive spin on it, right? So why is this any different? Yeah. This is the same thing everybody else does. It makes you want to go out to the street and shake them and say, wake up, wake up. <laughs> this is happening right There's now. There's so much cocaine in that house. Why are you not awake yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So much, so much. Yeah, it, it it isn't shocking. We, have, as a society, the longer we continue to let a government dictate to us our morality needs to reflect what they believe is truth, what they believe is evil, and that's where we, we have lost ourselves. We chose to leave jumped on a ship fired up that little old uh, mayflower engine and and cruised across the the sea at a right great speed of probably two or three knots <laughs> <laughs> depending upon the wind uh, you know we we wanted something better we we said so many years ago i think we can do this and do it right and once people are allowed not to have discussion about right, wrong, what works for the people. Now, there's been, there's been items of government assistance that is beneficial, but it, it then turns into overreach. Mm -hmm. And there's the checks and balances. It, it really needs to be, I, I, I almost think, judicially, we need to kind of look at it. It's like, okay, you guys are clearly overspending. And I, I know there's committees, but committees are just basically another place for them to, well, we're going to hide some extra money in our pockets because we've got committee. We, we're, we sit on this committee. Um, our general pay is this. Now that we're on a committee, we get this. So then it's just as long as we keep it in committee, we'll fumble it around, and then we'll fake our way through a vote, and half a dozen people will say, here, or just won't vote at all, which just irks me. You're there to vote for your constituents. It's either a yes or a no. There's no here. And Obama was really good about here or present when he was in Illinois. And I'm sure someone, some Obama fans, going to complain, but that's well, go ahead, comment go ahead, as much comment, as you like, you know, to the ends of the earth. Yeah, exactly. Um, the change that he thought you guys were told that he was going to get, I was kind of hoping maybe he did bring unity. He didn't bring unity. He didn't bring change. The change he brought was destruction, divisiveness. And divisiveness. Mm -hmm. That was the change he brought. And we've got a society that just continues to accept device this de, um, this device of evil, and here we are again with the government that's overreaching, telling us what we can say, when we can say it, and how we can say Thought it. Thought police. Now, <laughs> last time I checked, the first two are my God-given right, and I'm down here standing up for the first. My shirt speaks to the second. <laughs> I am the militia. My job is to make sure the government is doing its job correctly. And I can truly say it's not. But I only get one vote. And right now we're trying to reach as many people as we possibly can to educate them on where our government's at, its overreach, and say no more. Yes to this more, no more to 
overreach of government, overspending um, on stupid stuff. You know, it's always, you know, back in, when I was growing up, it was like, you know, $30,000 for a hammer, a $50,000 for a golden toilet seat. Not the whole toilet, just the seat. It's like That's how you launder you know, money. That's, that's yeah. exactly how you launder money. That's how you take the taxpayer's dollars and you put it in your own pocket. Yeah. So that's, that's the way it's done. That's uh, why the Pentagon lost uh, how many trillions of dollars? I think it was like three trillion. I, that was about right, Alan. I um, thought it was like six. I'm not sure, but that probably is about right. <laughs> it's it's some arbitrary what, bigger than we ever see. No. Which is funny because whenever you're I supposed to get six billion, I'm, no, it's tra- isn't trillions. More trillions. Okay. All righty. Which is really funny because considering that technically the way they're supposed to operate is they're supposed to actually get bids on everything, and they're supposed to take the lowest bid for the same product. So for them to pay, you know that much for a golden toilet seat or that much for a hammer or something. It's like they didn't get three bids. They had somebody else's, uh, they had a voter base that they needed. They had a friend that needed a favor. Yeah. And this pushed this through, which pushed this through. Yeah. Someone named Cheney and buy my hammers for 50 bucks each. And we'll make sure that everybody in my town votes your way. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Well, I was going to say someone named Cheney and a company named Halliburton. That was a, you know, government hand in hand with a company are currently uh, BlackRock and, and someone's niece and, um, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, Go ahead, Lou. And um, other countries, when you protest or don't like uh, talk about somebody or don't like the president, they uh, either chop your hands, chop your head, or put you in jail for the longest. Yeah. Here in the United States, they do it the slick way. They control you with money. That's how they control the people here. And if they see that the money don't control, then maybe after that is jail, you know? And that's the way it's worked. You mean like two and a half years of jail? Being isolated from your families and not getting a speedy trial? Exactly. Yeah, (laughs) right. And not only that, but uh, just for the general public, you you know, being trapped in your homes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, And then when you get to go see grandma, it's through a little plastic piece of... (laughs) <laughs> plexiglass yeah supposedly they they vented check the made sure all the workers were healthy uh, how sit do, back thinking yeah i don't know how air works it can't go it can't go up and over or underneath the uh yeah, plexiglass no, no. uh thing that's chained from the ceiling <laughs> exactly which floats the heat's still running it's warm in here don't you think that covid could have went through the vents could it could have did it's, could have winner but when you sit down at the table for dinner, it automatically goes away. Yeah. So you're going to have a steak. It's magically delicious. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, there's nothing delicious about it. No. No. no, <laughs> no. That is not a lucky charm. No. Uh, <laughs> Unless you put Lysol on it, and then, uh, hey, you're set to go. Kills 99% of germs. And can kill COVID. 99.9. Yeah, 99. I saw some idiots say, well, if it kills 99.9, why don't you just spray it twice? <laughs> Get the 100. <laughs> exactly. Find, find that 1% spray and spray what, it also. 0.01, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shh, shh, shh. We're what covered. We got what, the, what is the antithesis of this? Over here. What covers the other, you know, tenth of a percent? Uh, if Lysol wants to sponsor us or, or, or microban, we got we got both of them in the studio. I wasn't necessarily trying to throw a, a, a show. No, I'm always no, trying. So, I'm, I'm yeah. always trying to reach no. for a sponsor. Yeah, we need, yeah, touche, we need touche. someone that's brave enough to sponsor this show. Yeah. Um, but anyhow, let's uh, fly on this plane, yeah? All righty. Yeah. <laughs> Guy making the uh, plane noises over there. That's my father, Gary Moore. Hey, hey. Always glad to be here. So thank you for being here. Thank you for bringing the message. No problem. Uh, That means I'll see you next week. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Hasta la mañana. We we know that you're already, uh, you know, like I said, subscribe to Revolver, so make sure that you're going over to to his channel on YouTube. Uh, Follow more on the more where he'll uh, bring you some more messages that you don't necessarily get to hear on here, and they're more in-depth as well. Yeah. Yeah. and we got more stuff uh, down down the pike yeah. with that. I'm sure once once Revolver and, and more on the more uh, start shaking hands a little more, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And there's there's a lot of content I still have have yet to get up, and uh, I don't know. I I may make my way over here. Um, just gotta you know the numbers have to match. His people got to get with my people and get <laughs> everything going. I mean, you know, hey, they're at this table, you know, and over there in the in the producers booth. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we don't have to go far. Uh, Look, Gary, I'm not meeting on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I have to draw a line. And he usually does. he doesn't go fishing either. You'll have to go kayak, kayaking with him to, to get Alan to go anywhere. Uh, we'll all put your shoulders back in place. <laughs> That's uh, when we do the most praying, when we get on the kayak, because we don't know what's going to happen. happen. <laughs> I'm better off in a canoe. Me too. <laughs> But uh, speaking of him, uh, like I said, you know, everybody's favorite, the host of The Laughing Libertarian, Alan McFarland. Thanks for joining us, sir. Hey, everybody, and thanks for having Ooh. me on. And across from him, we should get cheers. The host wow. of Rodriguez Rants, Louis Rodriguez. Thank <laughs> you for having me. Thank you for being here. It's always a pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hope I make it for the next week. Yeah. I, oh, I know you have the most fans out there. Everybody loves you way more than they love the rest of us, so... That's just that's just the nature of, uh, oh, really? yeah. To find them, <laughs> talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thank you. Yeah, comment for Louie and 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 make sure that you're uh, sending him your love and and uh, you know if if you're local to to the Beach Grove Indianapolis area, you know maybe you can uh, let him know where you guys can meet up and and talk and hang out. Because as of right now, we have to throw a blanket over him and escort him to his vehicle. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere to see anybody. Who knows who they out there trying to kill me? I don't know. <laughs> You just bring security. Uh, me and Alan will be there for you. <laughs> <laughs> Not if they have a semi-automatic. <laughs> <laughs> We're goners. Well, anyway, you can comment and show them your love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've been your host, Joshua Cummins. Remembering, remember, you got to stay in trouble, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>